Hello and welcome to the One Man Band. I'm one of the co-hosts here, Mark Browner, and I'm here with the One Man Band himself, J.R. Rodriguez. Hello, welcome to our next episode. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a documentary that I made on my favorite boxer of all time is Felix Trinidad. Um, this documentary has gotten me a lot of subscribers on my YouTube channel. It has um, gotten me a lot of comments. The most comments I've gotten has been on that documentary. People really, really love it. And then there's a few haters out there who just, you know, I hate him because he's the greatest, you know, in my opinion. But anyway, so um, you, you got like uh, 154,000 views of that video yeah, alone. So, yeah, yeah. And so, the reason I want to talk about it is because I have always wanted to do uh, an original documentary because the way I made this documentary, which is on my channel now is I took, um, I basically took the, all the fights. I have like, I collected all his fights in, in HBO and Showtime. Whoever was the main event of the fight, they would go and do a little piece on the fighters. They would go to their training camps, interview them, and then they would show this. Just kind of background on, on, yeah. on the different fighters. On where they're at at that point in their career, you know? And so they were like five minute, 10 minute pieces. Mm -hmm. So I took from each fight in chronological order, just his portion of the thing and pieced them all together. And when, they, when it runs, it, it comes off like one whole um, produced piece. Right. But I actually... One long doc, uh, 40 minute documentary, yeah, basically. Yeah, and, it, and it basically it only covers his boxing career, not so much his personal life, you know? Which is what 90% of his fans are, right. it's the reason why they're his fans, is because of his of, boxing career. Right, I think it kind of touches on maybe a little bit of his personal life, like... Very little. Very, very little. Yeah, yeah, very little. And so, that's the closest that I've come to making a documentary on Trinidad. So I posted that, that up on YouTube, and it's gotten, like, so many hits, and so many views, and, you know, so many comments. And so I'm talking about this documentary because I want to uh, basically produce another documentary, but an original. I'm going to try to raise some money if there's enough interest, if I can get the support from, from my subscribers, then I would love to get an interview with Trinidad and focus the interview on his personal life because I believe that the relationship that Trinidad has with his father makes them the most successful father and son team in boxing history. I can't think of any other father and son team in boxing or really in any other sport. I'm not going to claim that, you know, they're you know, the most successful in all the sports, but I personally don't know of any other father and son team that has been so successful as uh, Trinidad and his father. And there has been no other example of a father and son relationship, you know, because uh, De La Hoya and his father, uh, their relationship was never good. Uh, apparently, De La Hoya's father uh, wasn't very nice to De La Hoya, and De La Hoya kind of resented him for it. And, uh, you know, they, they broke up at a certain point in his career. He left his father. Same thing with um, Mayweather. He had big falling outs with his father. They have a really 
bad relationship. They can't really get along. They can be civil with each other, but they really don't get along. Okay. So and what, so what you're saying is there have been other father son many, many teams. Shane but, Mosley, there's been many, but none that have survived <coughs> throughout the entire career. There's throughout the entire career mm -hmm. and with the level of respect, you know, because uh, Trinidad is a hero to many, many Puerto Ricans, but Trinidad's hero is his father, you see? And I think their lives a very, very special, beautiful story that needs to be told. No one's ever done a real in-depth documentary about their relationship. Nothing, as that I know of, nothing has been done, okay? okay? And so... And it, uh, his father's still alive, right? His father's still alive. Okay. And it, Trinidad, in the last couple years, has been inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's a few of them, and he's been inducted into two of them. In his um, induction speech, he credits his father and breaks down emotionally when he talks about his father. In 1990, in his 20th pro bout, he stopped Maurice Blocker to capture the IBF welterweight crown. 15 successful defenses later, 12 by knockout, following and including victories over Hector Camacho, Yori Bori Campos, Obakar, Pernell Whitaker, and Oscar De La Hoya. 2001, he became a three division champion, defeating William Joppe. A dynamic puncher with explosive left hook, 2014 Hall of Fame inductee in the modern category, Felix Tito Trinidad. Este premio, esta sortija, muy linda. Truthfully, uh, this this award, this ring, which is very beautiful. Y lo que está aquí en la cajita. And what's in, in, the, in this box? La semblanza. The certificate. Son parte de la mentuya. They all, all belong to you as well. Mi corazón, te my quiero. Heart. I love you. Te amo. Y de verdad, de los años que papito Dios me dé, siempre, siempre estaré agradecido de ti. The siempre, year, siempre. The God would give me, I will always, always be proud of you. Siempre. from that speech that he still has like high admiration for his father and respect to where he credit his father for all his success, you know? Wow. And so that's a beautiful thing. And when you look at uh, the other relationships in boxing, father and son relationship, mm -hmm. they're not good. Yeah. They're not good. They're Boxing doesn't have a good track record of producing, right. you know, uh, good, sound, level-headed citizens, mm. you know? Okay. Boxers typically have a lot of issues in their life outside of, you know, their professional career and their personal life. You not, know, not to mention huge, huge egos as well. Yeah. It truly cares about people cares about his fans, you know, mm -hmm. and, and gives a lot of credit to, to like you said, his father, his for father. His success. So for me, that's the story. That's what I want to get. And <clears throat> I live in Texas. Like I said, I moved here in, in, uh, towards the end of 99, hmm. like mm -hmm. in December sometime, we drove out here and moved to Austin yeah. and after I was here, living here already for maybe uh, a year, year and a half, something like this. I'm uh -huh. not sure. But my friend Louis, he called me and it took a, 
a lot of money, a lot of savings for us to make this move. So once we were here, we we were like you were tapped out. We were tapped out. We had a okay. lot of catching up to do. Sure, you know, trying to get back on your feet in yeah. a new city, everything, right? Yeah. So Louis, he contacted me that um, he basically contributed money towards bringing Trinidad from Puerto Rico to, they were gonna name like a little daycare center after Trinidad. And so they had like wow. a whole ceremony planned uh -huh. for the christening of this new daycare center. And so they flew Trinidad to Philadelphia. And so were, your friend Luis financed this whole to get he him didn't to finance come the whole thing he contributed money towards it okay, okay. and so because he did he that was one of several people who yeah. contributed okay and so because he did that mm -hmm. he was able to present trinidad with a plaque he was uh bringing his son up in boxing and he wanted his son to be like the next felix trinidad ah so okay he set it up so that when Trinidad was here for that reception, mm -hmm. Louis was going to present him with a plaque and his son was going to hand it to him. Nice. And so, okay. Uh, he called me and told me this and I was like, damn, I wish I was in Philly now, you know? <laughs> right. And so somehow I managed to beg, borrow and steal the money to fly back Wow. And this was like in a week's notice, a week and a half week's notice, you right. know. So you weren't getting great deals on, on the, on the on flight, airline flight on the airline tickets. Flight. Yeah. So <laughs> I managed it, got a ticket to this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like, wow, I'm finally going to meet Felix Trinidad. Wow. Okay. You know? So, yeah, a big, My hero. big hero, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So I get there, I get to this event, you know. And it's a big dinner. So there's all these tables and everybody's there. Everybody's dressed to the nine. They're waiting. Sure. I'm recording. His dad came out and mingled with people. I got to talk to him. I got to take a picture with him. Right, I saw the, I saw the picture. Yeah. On one but Trinidad, the they kept him in the back room. Like in some kind of green room or something, you know? Like his handlers were like... The people who were handling him. Was he still associated with Don King at this time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. he's always been okay. associated with him. All right. And so... Was he there? No. Okay, all right. There was no money for him to make, so right. why would he be right. there? You know? <laughs> and so, That's a whole other story, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm there, I'm excited, I'm waiting, and... Trinidad is brought out. Mm-hmm. And he's on the stage, Louis gets on stage, he gives him the plaque, Trinidad makes a little speech, and then they shuttle him back to the green room, and it was like, thank you, have a nice day. Wow. It was the just like, the impression him out, was that, pulled him back. you know, you were going to oh, pay to have the privilege of being in his presence and mingling with him, you know, take right. pictures with him. Yeah, maybe get an autograph. Autographs, you know. Okay. I was jaded to say the least. <laughs> you didn't Money. blame Felix, though. No, I don't blame Felix, you know. But his handlers. Yeah. But his handlers, yes. And so. That was the closest I came. He was up on the stage. I was very close. Yeah. But you did but meet his father. I couldn't get close enough to get a picture, yeah. to talk with him, even like a quick little interview. Nothing. Mm. And so... Kind of a letdown. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's why I'm making this documentary, because if there's any hope that someone out there who's watching this video, who's maybe connected to Trinidad, who watch my documentary and think like, hey, this guy deserves a shot. He deserves an opportunity and you can connect me with Trinidad. I will be so deeply, deeply indebted to you. I would put your, I will give you a big thank you at the end of the documentary, <laughs> you know, right? with your name and all. Cause yeah. I meet people all the time mm -hmm. who claim they have a connection to Trinidad. So with that, I'm gonna conclude this podcast and 
Again, if there's anyone out there who has watched this podcast or watched my documentary on Trinidad and you feel like, hey, this guy has a great idea, I want to support him. If you have a contact or any way of uh, uh, helping me get connected with Trinidad, I'm going to leave my email address and contact information in the description along with a link to my Patreon page. So if anybody wants to support my YouTube channel and support this particular project, please go to my Patreon page and a dollar a month, five dollars a month will, will go very, very far in making me uh, a full-time producer. Absolutely. All right. So thanks for watching The One Man Band, and we will see you next time. Next time. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye.